God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Rise up, Lord, and come to my aid. O Lord, plead my cause against my foes. Fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and shield. Arise to help me. O Lord, say to my soul, I am your salvation. But my soul shall be joyful in the Lord and rejoice in his salvation. My whole being will say, Lord, who is like you, who rescue the weak from the strong and the poor from the oppressor? Lying witnesses arise and accuse me unjustly. They repay me evil for good. My soul is forlorn. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rise up, Lord, and, and come, come to my, my aid. aid. All-powerful Lord, stand by me and defend me. When they were sick, I went into mourning, afflicted with fasting. My prayer was ever on my lips, as for a brother, a friend. I went as though mourning a mother, bowed down with grief. Now that I am in trouble, they gather, they gather and mock me. They take me by surprise and strike me and tear me to pieces. They provoke me with mockery on mockery and gnash their teeth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All-powerful Lord, stand, stand by, by me and, and defend, defend me. me. My tongue will speak of your goodness all the day long. O Lord, how long will you look on? Come to my rescue. Save my life from these raging beasts, my soul from these lions. I will thank you in the great assembly. Amid the throng I will praise you. Do not let my lying foes rejoice over me. Do not let those who hate me unjustly wink eyes at each other. O Lord, you have seen. Do not be silent. Do not stand afar off. Awake, stir to my defense, to my cause, O God. Let there be joy for those who love my cause. Let them say without end, Great is the Lord who delights in the peace of his servant. Then my tongue shall speak of your justice all day long of your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My tongue will, will speak, speak of, of your goodness, goodness all the day long. My son, take my words to heart. Do as I say, and you will live. From the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Galatians. Stand firm and do not take on yourselves the yoke of slavery a second time. Pay close attention to me, Paul, when I tell you that if you have yourselves circumcised, Christ will be of no use to you. I point out once more to all who receive circumcision that they are bound to the law in its entirety. Any of you who seek your justification in the law have severed yourselves from Christ and fallen from God's favor. It is in the spirit that we eagerly await the justification we hope for, and only faith can yield it. In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor the lack of it counts for anything, only faith, which expresses itself through love. You were progressing so very well. Who diverted you from the path of truth? Such enticement does not come from him who calls you. A little yeast can affect the entire dough. 
I trust that in the Lord you will not adopt a different view. May condemnation fall on whoever it is that is unsettling you. As for me, brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, why do the attacks on me continue? If I were, the cross would be a stumbling block no more. Would that those who are troubling you might go the whole way and castrate themselves. My brothers, remember that you have been called to live in freedom, but not a freedom that gives free reign to the flesh. Out of love, place yourselves at one another's surface. The whole law has found its fulfillment in this one saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you go on biting and tearing one another to pieces, take care. You will end in mutual destruction. My point is that you should live in accord with the Spirit, and you will not yield to the cravings of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. The two are directly opposed. This is why you do not do what your will intends. If you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. It is obvious what proceeds from the flesh. Lewd conduct, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hostilities, bickering, jealousy, outbursts of rage, selfish rivalries, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patient endurance, kindness, generosity, faith, mildness, and chastity. Against such there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's lead. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The signs of the Spirit's presence are love, joy, and peace. Since we live by the Spirit, let him direct our lives. The signs of the Spirit's presence are love, joy, and peace. From a letter from St. Bernadette Subaru, Virgin. I had gone down one day with two other girls to the bank of the river Gov when suddenly I heard a kind of rustling sound. I turned my head toward the field by the side of the river, but the trees seemed quite still, and the noise was evidently not from them. Then I looked up and caught sight of the cave where I saw a lady wearing a lovely white dress with a bright belt. On top of each of her feet was a pale yellow rose, the same color as her rosary beads. At this I rubbed my eyes, thinking I was seeing things, and I put my hands into the fold of my dress where my rosary was. I wanted to make the sign of the cross, but for the life of me I couldn't manage it, and my hand just fell down. Then the lady made the sign of the cross herself, and at the second attempt, I managed to do the same, though my hands were trembling. Then I began to say the rosary, while the lady let her beads slip through her fingers without moving her lips. When I stopped saying the Hail Mary, she immediately vanished. I asked my two companions if they had noticed anything, but they said no. Of course they wanted to know what I was doing, and I told them that I had seen a lady wearing a nice white dress, though I didn't know who she was. I told them not to say anything about it, and they said I was silly to have anything to do with it. I said they were wrong, and I came back next Sunday, feeling myself drawn to the place. The third time I went, the lady spoke to me, and asked me to come every day for 15 days. I said I would, and then she said that she wanted me to tell the priests to build a chapel there. She also told me to drink from the stream. I went to the Gav, the only stream I could see. 
Then she made me realize she was not speaking of the Gav, and she indicated a little trickle of water close by. When I got to it, I could only find a few drops, mostly mud. I cupped my hands to catch some liquid without success, and then I started to scrape the ground. I managed to find a few drops of water, but only at the fourth attempt was there a sufficient amount for any kind of drink. The lady then vanished, and I went back home. I went back each day for two weeks, and each time, except one Monday and one Friday, the lady appeared and told me to look for a stream and wash in it, and to see that the priests build a chapel there. I must also pray, she said for the conversion of sinners. I asked her many times what she meant by that, but she only smiled. Finally, with outstretched arms and eyes looking up to heaven, she told me she was the Immaculate Conception. During the two weeks, she told me three secrets, but I was not to speak about them to anyone, and so far I have not. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Let us pray. God of mercy, we celebrate the Feast of Mary, the sinless Mother of God. May her prayers help us to rise above our human weakness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.